Now today on Stitches TV, we are going to make the most gorgeous cardigan out of a cot blanket. The reason why I like to use cot blankets, or even bigger blankets, is because one, you get fantastic knitted fabric that I can never buy from any shop, but also you can use these wonderful finished off edges. The cardigan that I'm making today is just going to be a little cropped cardigan with a shawl collar and it's actually going to be for my daughter. What's really brilliant about doing this tutorial is we don't need any pattern at all. All you need, well for me, I've used her old t-shirt just as a rough idea of her size. Now, I don't know if I'm going to have enough material for sleeves, so I'm going to make it so the sleeves go like that, so it just sort of goes like that and down. And then if there is fabric left over, I'll do kind of a little rectangle for the sleeves. So I want you to fold the fabric over, and for me, I have to match up all of my scallops, make sure that it's straight. Okay, I'm gonna get her T-shirt and make the center of the T-shirt roughly be aligned with the edge of the fabric, which is going to be the front. Now, this is a really important thing that you need to do. Because we're doing a shawl collar, we need to cut a distance from here, like that, because that's going to continue around the back. It will make sense in a minute. So this bit here is going to become my shawl collar that will feed around the back. Now I'm going to cut along where I think the shoulder is going to be. But with whatever I'm doing I need to leave enough for the back so I can't go too crazy there. And then I'm going to just start slowly coming down so this will be wherever her sleeve will be. And then down here will be the side seam and it should look something like that. So the next thing that we need to cut out is the back. So just find somewhere on your leftover bits of cot blanket where you can definitely have a hem at the bottom. So I've got this here for my hem at the bottom. Now I'm going to have to have um, a join down the back, but you might be able to get away with it just having a fold, which would be brilliant. So I'm lining up my fabric at the hem. So this is my pattern from the front. I'm just lining it up with the hem. I'm going to trace out that shoulder now. So I'm tracing out the shoulder. I'm going to go straight down to the hem. Now I've got these lovely scallopy bits that I might be able to use for the sleeve. So I'll put those to one side. And now, if I just take my pattern for the front off, you can see that we need to shape the neck for the back. Now there isn't too much shaping that goes on at the back and I actually think that that sort of shape will be fine. So look, we've got our front, we've got two fronts because we need two fronts and then we've got our back piece and I had to do mine so I've got to join it together. So what I want to know is if I have any left for sleeves and I think I have these lovely scallopy bits that I could possibly use as sleeves. So I'm just going to cut a kind of rectangle shape that I'll use for sleeves. So I've cut two rectangles and I managed to get those gorgeous scallopy bits and they are going to become sleeves, something like that. So the first thing that we're going to overlock are, for me, you might have it in one piece. I've got it in two pieces, the back so the back seam for me is in two pieces, so I want to overlock that because that's the first thing that I'm going to do. I'm going to stitch those together and just pretend that they were one. Now the thing 
about using knitted fabric is of course it frays. So before you start working with them, you want to get those edges either zigzagged or over. So I'm going to stitch up that back seam now with quite a large stitch, kind of like a bigger than three type of stitch. I'm not going to use a zigzag stitch, there's not much stretching that's going to go on here. But I'm going to hold where the hem is and hold in the middle and sew, because I don't use pins. Well, sometimes I use pins, but not often. So forwards and back to close off the seam in the beginning and just work your way down. Now you sort of have to squash knitted fabric as you sew and I recommend having quite a big seam allowed. So I think I've got about half an inch, sort of centimetre and a half. Now you know what I'm like about pressing. So can you give that seam a really good press? I've done it so that the seam is open because the knitted stuff is quite kind of bulky. I want you to overlock or zigzag or bind, however you're going to finish them off. I want you to finish off all of your edges now. Right, I've overlocked everything, every single raw edge I could find. So now I'm going to put my fabric right sides together. So I've got one of those front pieces right sides together now what I want you to do is, I want you to sew from where this shawl collar is, you need to be from just at the junction of where it starts to go up for the, the shawl collar, it will be lined up with the fabric underneath there, I want you to sew with half an inch seam allowance, a big centimetre seam allowance, from here going along the shoulder and do the same on the other side as well. It's important that you do start in the right place there so that everything lines up afterwards. Now go backwards and forwards there. Remember, you've got to squash this stuff down as you sew. And then when you get to the end of the shoulder, backwards and forwards there. So we, we started there and we went along there so that we can easily attach the collar. But we're not going to do the collar yet because we're going to do the other side. So whatever you did on this side, you need to do on the other side now. So you've done both of them now. So now what I recommend you do is, if you've checked the length of these short collar bits and they seem to be the correct length, then you can safely stitch these two bits together. But because it's going to be on the short collar and you don't want them to show, I recommend that you stitch them the wrong way round so they're like that. So now I really want you to give that a good, a good press. Now using steam, so there's that little bit that we just did. So we just need to flip it over and line it up with our centre back seam. And I really recommend sewing from the centre out and the centre out. So I'm starting on that centre back seam. Kind of going backwards and forwards a little bit. It's quite thick there, but it will be all right. And then I'm just easing, just easing my way around to where we started sewing that shoulder seam. I can just about see it. And then I'm going to go backwards and forwards there. And then just do exactly the same on the other side as well. So look, it's quite clever, isn't it? And so simple. So you get that neat finish at the back. And a lovely short collar. Now, if it is all a bit bulky back here, give it a really good steamy press because it will flatten it. And then you can always stick a special label on the back. So I've got my sleeve. I've got to put it right sides together with the fabric. But first of all, I want to know where the centre is. So I'm folding it over and I'm just going to hold it there because I can't put a notch there and I can't really mark it for any chalk. So I'm going to hold it there and align it with the shoulder. And then I'm going to stitch from the shoulder down one side, from the shoulder down the other side on the side seam. From there, I'm doing a good seam allowance because this 
fabric is subject to fraying. And I'm going to stop about a centimetre away from the edge of this stuff here. So using steam, I'm going to give it a good old press open just to soften it up a bit. But I need it to be closed here. I need it to come over towards the sleeve where it's near the seam. Look, it just looks so much more professional when you give it a good press. Now stitch on the other side and give that a good press. And then all we have to do is just stitch up the side seams and it's done. So we've got both sleeves on, they've both been pressed. Every seam has been nicely pressed. So this is a really easy bit now. All we have to do is fold it right sides together and line up our side seams. And if they don't fit, you just ease them and you make them fit. Now the first thing that I want you to do is I want you to push these seams here where the armpit is where the sleeve meets the armpit and I want you to start in there and stitch straight down to the hem and then after that we're going to push the seams the other way and start in the armpit and then come down to the hem of the sleeve. When you have really bulky fabric you think oh I can't get it underneath. I mean to people that are not used to sewing, I don't know if you know, but if you lift up the handle of the foot here on the side you can get some extra room underneath whilst you adjust it and then drop it and then drop it properly. Now that needle needs to go in about where you stop sewing on, on the sleeve. So for me that's about half an inch, a large, large centimetre in and I'm going to go backwards and forwards there because armpits they are a stress point aren't they? And then I'm just going to ease my way down the side seam. And when I get to the end, I'm going to go backwards and forwards just a couple of times to close off that seam. Right, so now I want you to push those seams for the sleeve. Push them away now because you want to get right in to that little bit there. So I'm lifting the foot up, getting it in position, putting the needle down, backwards and forwards, oh, I can't go back. backwards and forwards, and then just stitch down to the end of the sleeve. So when you get to the end of that sleeve, you want to go backwards and forwards a couple of times there. And then that's your sleeve done. So look, it's so cute, look at that. But we haven't finished yet because you've got to do the other side. So we've done it. That's pretty easy, isn't it? But I do want you to press all of your seams and press down that collar, that shawl collar as well, because then um, it helps it stay into shape. But I want to show you a little trick. I'm going to make it kind of flute out a little bit on the head. So hopefully, because this usually works, if I stretch around the hem and I apply some steam and I'm pulling it, so I'm pulling the hem out and I'll do that all the way around. So that's not bad. I think she'll be really happy with that. So there's the back. In an ideal world, I would have matched up my patchwork, <laughs> but I only had so much material. Now you could make a grown up version of this if you just used a bigger blanket and what it's all about is making use of those lovely scallopy edges that you get on the edge of blankets. Now I can't try this on because I am small but I'm not really that small. Now if you decide to make cardigans out of cot blankets or other blankets or anything using this tutorial please share it with me on my Facebook page Stitchless TV. Thank you so much for watching. See you again really soon. Bye.